Hello friends, welcome back. This is full stack development video series. We were building the Smart Certify app, which is the online certification platform app. And in this video, we will be taking a deep dive into the database design behind the Smart Certify app. We'll be exploring all the key tables, relationships, and how they work together to power the online course certification platform. Whether you are learning database design or building your own app, this video is going to give you the insights that you need. So without delay, come let's get started. So friends, before we start, if you have not subscribed to my channel, subscribe and hit that like button. All right. So again, I have opened up the SSMS tool, which is here, and I'm going to go over the database uh, schema. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. So here's the complete script, which we will go through slowly. Okay. This is the database design part. So before we design, first we need to understand what is our application is going to do. Based on that only, you can design. And always business or anything that will always grow, right? Application or anything will always grow. So there's something called minimum viable product, MVP. That's nothing but whatever is really minimum for us to get the app working, the basic functionality or any minimum requirement, all the companies will start like that. As things comes in, you know, uh, the database will evolve it. Same thing is going to go for us. So I have enough tables to get started. So let's go one by one. So in the previous video, I told you how we create a database. So we are basically checking the database to exist. Again, these scripts are run only one time. This is only for our understanding. Okay, so we're checking the database to exist in the database, um, uh, you know, schema. If it is exist, it is going to drop because we're going to recreate it. Okay, so if it doesn't exist, it's going to create if to exist, it's going to drop. But again, you don't need this, but just only for understanding. So all what you have to do is you run this, which is going to create a database and then let's focus on the tables. So this is the table where I wanted to store the users information. Okay, now user profile information uh, content, right? See these, uh, this table will start having records as user starts logging in. They sign in or sign up, the user will start seeing the records coming up here. We are going to see those kind of concepts, how this table gets inserted into some records as we progress. And when we come into Azure ADB to see, um, there's something called uh, the function will do this. That's the API connector, which we are going to use it. But this is where the user's information is going to be present. So that's why AD object ID is nothing but a unique object ID that's available and present in uh, Microsoft Azure AD B2C. That data is what we are going to refer here. Okay. Now we have another table called roles table where I define roles. I can have admin, read only, support, customer. I can just keep, uh, you know, growing. These are the four uh, initial roles that I get started with. Okay. So for good, because if you watch the previous video, you know, we will create a table column name. So we'll get a table, a column name, and that's it, a constraint. So for good. So again, this database design is the primary focus of this video, not learning how SQL works. SQL works nicely. I recommend you watching the previous video, which I've explained even a very basic beginners will understand. All right. So let's go to the next table. Here's the thing. I wanted to use my a database as a centralized database. So I wanted to create a table called smart app where uh, I will record uh, which application is this meant for. Okay, so this one will have, uh, see, I've already given smart table, we can use this database centralized one so that any number of future apps that you create, you can still use the same database. And you can start adding different different tables uh, that will have some common tables alone linked to it. Okay. Now, here's the next important thing. There's a table called user role table. Okay. What this user role table will do is we are defining for each user what role they have. This is a user table. This is a role table. If I have my entry here, what role I have? That linkage is here. Okay. And look at this user role ID, role ID, user ID, smart app ID. Smart app ID means basically for a given application, for a given user, what role I have. That is what this is defining. So for example, smart certify app is the app today we are building, right? 
in that i am an admin so my user role uh, I, my user id is going to be like say 2 role id is admin so admin role will come smart app id is going to be 1 because it's just the first record but tomorrow another app comes and i am a support in that so my user id will come here but app id is going to be different because that's how it works right so for a different tab i am a different role i am a different i'm the same user but i have a different role that's why this concept is important okay if you if you don't understand this just hear this one more time and let me know in the comment section if you still need any clarification now here is the next important thing so what we have is we have something called course where i will define like say angular um, .net react java so and so so i just need to hold those information in a table so i have a course id i have a title for that i have a description for that okay that's it it just created created on created by reminding it all the same foreign key and primary key okay now what i'm going to do is let's say i have a course called angular i have to create a n number of questions and answers options for angular here comes the question table so for question table i have a course id which means angular for angular i have a question it's called question text that question is easy or medium or difficult whatever it is that's the level of that particular question is that question has some code yes or no bit is a data type which says yes or no default is no that's why default zero if you notice there's a mistake here if you have found it let me know here if you watched the previous video you know what the mistake that i'm referring to all right there's something missing here okay now here the next table again same mistake gonna let me know i will be waiting for you so questions are here for each question for a given category like for a given course i might have four options so choice is the table which will hold the question id so here you see this there's no course id here because course id is here so the question will come here for that particular question i have four records choice 1 choice 2 choice 3 choice 4 choice text that's the option first options value again it's a code or not and i am also saying that option is correct or not so here one record will be there here four record will be there for that particular question because those four are nothing but option a b c d if i have more options no problem more questions i mean like more choice a b c d e f six options sounds good that's how the tables are organized okay so for good that's how we are going to uh, my like we we're, we're going to do all of these things and then let's say user let's say i am a user i wanted to write an exam i wanted to evaluate myself i will choose the angular as my course in this table will start having uh, information about which user what course they selected what was the current status which is default uh, the default value was in progress when they started when they finished do they have any feedback for us that's how the feedback columns are okay so this is all defined based on my evaluation of the application i am saying these are the columns that is important for this kind of a table all you need to understand is why i have created such thing how the relationships are maintained that's what you need to understand okay so for a given user which is user id will come here he choose angular so angular course id will come here from the course table and i will say what is my current status when i started when i finished and what is my feedback if i have given any feedback i will record it here for a given course that's the whole idea okay now what this exam question is all about is let's say i start an exam 20 questions idea is to insert those 20 questions randomly from that question bank from the from the question table for a given user and put it here so what will happen i have exam id what questions id was picked up for that particular user and what the user was selected default probably he never selected anything because he never go through questions right initially that's why we set as null and again this is something that indicates whether the answer is correct or not i mean it's again the same thing what 
what he chose he chose because answer is correct or not it is rare in the choice table what what the user chose is what we have to record here and if he chose that he has to uh, review it later it will be recorded here okay here's the thing the moment we have a n number of questions for a given user that he starts it's easy for us to resume those questions whenever he wants to resume it okay in real world uh, certification you need to finish it within the stipulated time but in our case we are going to be very flexible so the user can come back and learn uh, pause whatever he can do okay that's our idea and then we have some a uh, couple more tables here okay let's go on by one notification table basically i'm saying if i have to send some notification which will come in upcoming videos uh, let's say a new course is added okay i want to publish this kind of notification to all of my users so i will put some data here like a subject content when to send uh, all of those things uh, some other functions will pick up this information and you know will start sending email to all of the users that's the idea of this table so this table has no relationship other than the primary key so like i said some tables can stand alone because there is no relationship between that table and another table which is okay you need to go through all kind of uh, situations right that's why this is uh, given now there is another table called user notification like i said when we start reading a particular a uh, new notification start sending information to the user we record it here to whom we sent when we sent be sent or not so that if it something fails we can retry that particular notification for the particular user we are going to do all of these things as i speak we are going to do all of these concepts okay so i feel you are excited let me know in the comment section how much you are excited and um, the next table is again a stand alone table where in the ui when you log in or when you come to the home page i wanted to show some nice banner on the top on the top and it has to be random it has to just no managed by admin like here this table holds those information and angular will pick up a call in api get the value and start showing the banner once the banner time is done like for example so the angular will take care of this banner it will call an api api will return a data based on the data you know the angular will start showing that banner and let's say the banner ends today tomorrow you come to the application the banner will not be shown unless i change the date So that's the idea. Again, this is a standalone table. All right. So for good, again, user activity logs is basically my idea is to record what you guys are doing, like my users are doing. This also will come as we progress. Uh, I'm going to give you a lot of task as we uh, we've never done that. I'm going to give you task as we develop certain good features, and then I'm going to mimic. I'm going to give you task similar to what I did, and you're going to do it. Okay. That way you will learn nicely. again last table contact us anybody writes anything wanted to contact me they put it from the ui it comes and sits here and it sends an email to me okay so we start with the minimum viable product this is more than enough for us to start we can expand this later as uh, we progress if at all we want right maybe i might do it but this is a very good app to start with so this is how our database looks like let's do one more thing let's go here Okay, so I selected this database. I go to Query, Design Query in Editor. Okay, see it comes uh, with all the database tables. See if I choose. Um, okay, so you know basically this is one of the good thing that you can use in SSMS. So you select the tables, and what it does is actually um, you know it just uh, you know based on the design that we did right the foreign key primary key relationship. it just adds everything so i can remove this span i can remove this equal so this will give you some you know or else let's do this right let's let's keep it simple uh let's not complicate for the newcomers so let's add the question no no this one question choice exam questions all right so i have question choice exam questions and exams right so you see this it looks nice right so we have questions we have choice for that and then exam questions okay so somebody is taking exam so this is how it works okay so you see this this is the relationship 
So we have question for that. There's a choice. This choice is what the user is selected here. So this is the exam questions that user uh, uh, you know was presented with uh, exam. So the question refers here. The choice refers here, and there's an exam relationship between these two table alone. Okay. So that's how it works. And um, as you develop, you will see how things works, and we will be writing some uh, simple query to the complex queries, and how we will translate that into link queues in SQ. Uh, how we will transfer those kind of uh, big queries into complex queries into uh, link queue using the EF core. We're gonna see a lot of things. Uh, I hope this will be excited for you. And uh, if you like this video. Hit that like button and share this with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, let me know in the comment section how do you feel so far for this video series. All right, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding.